Today on BTF, spoiler alert, Spirit is out of this, so play like there's nothing to lose, because there isn't. Will the curse be reversed again? Psycho fighting for their playoff lives. Newsflash. Did you know that in case of emergency, AM Kid was a sub for Team Gale and Mortsy was a sub for Team Storm? And finally, here's a number for you. Two times ten equals twenty. CPT points. Our stat boy has those numbers, too. Welcome back to Beyond the Fist, the Street Fighter League livecast talk show presented by Toga TV, Spliced Helix, Mortsy, and Tagashi Azrael for your Street Fighter League Pro US Season 2 coverage. Video footage from Street Fighter League Pro US is used with permission from Capcom. Follow the Capcom Pro Tour and Street Fighter League on Twitch at twitch.tv slash Capcom Fighters, at YouTube at youtube.com slash Capcom Fighters TV, and on Facebook Live, facebook.com slash Capcom Fighters. Let's get into the action right away. Team Spirit were officially eliminated from contention last week as they lose all tiebreaker scenarios to the teams ahead of them. Team Frost were riding hot off the heels of another reverse sweep by Team Ace Samurai, this time over a very brash Team Captain Punk and Team Inferno. One team playing for pride, the other playing for position in the playoffs. Here are your highlights from Spirit versus Frost. as well i mean sabin has two bars of ex as well but at least it's this is good to go into a last potential round with resources first blood oh. gonna come from sabin the slide missed the mark i think sherry would have been able to press the button mm. trying to look for another jump in the exd Let me out dash oh. up gets the throw goes for the air to air would have been if uh if they could have caught that there it is yes mm -hmm. that's what i'm talking about that's what i wanted to see from sherry Genix. Gotta Being able to snipe down those stasis, or all the stasis, when he, as soon as he lands, going for the V-Skill. But he can change up that timing, right? He can jump, just do drill right back down to the ground, potentially catch you doing Ooh. so, or teleport out again. Oh, the dive kick was right into the crouch of Fierce. Activate oh. the V-Trigger. Sherry in trouble right now. Go oh, on. that went right past the fireball. I thought it was going to hit. And oh, that but will you know Chuck and Plasma. Hey, fireball game from Samurai. Wow. Just so good. I mean, even better, we saw CJ Truth finally get through with the EX Hooligan. I, I really want to see what he's going to do to get in this time. You can tell Samurai's ready. The standing jabs to Prime just that to get ready. Throw, yeah, that side switch, but it's still too far away to get any sort of media off of it. Nice conversion off the jabs there from Samurai. Does have two bars he's sitting on. I don't think he's looking to spend it at all, but CJ Truth does have a lot loaded to get Hooligan Dive Kick as his point of entry. We'll see if that's going to be the case. Oh, that could have been it. Jump, Dive Kick, jump, EX Dive Kick at that. Same situation we saw last time. Nice to get the, throw. the very last second, too. Oh. Stopping the fireball. Oh, nice punish. 50 seconds left on the clock. CA almost available. Double fireball. For Cammy, that is. There's the activation of the trigger on her side, though. Full trigger available for Samurai. A lot of gray life after a series of medium punches and a fierce. You might see an activation, too, from Samurai. Whoa. Oh, it's going to be a oh. big one. Activate. Spans one bar EX. Nice tech again. Late tech from TJ. Needs to be careful. Fireballs at this range can be. Don't. Oh, I was going to say, oh don't do it. Yeah, he needs to be careful. You can see eight through those fireballs. You got to be careful. There's the throw. Trigger. Trigger not a threat anymore. Samurai can't overextend here if he wants to lock in this this game. But CJ Truth just needs one hit. Ten Eight sec seconds. Oh, oh the EXDP. EXDP. Four seconds left. Three. He didn't quick rise. That's it. That's going to be enough. Samurai, Samurai takes it on the time this time around. Coming out to play. But you still have right. Samurai. Living up to the name, it just slowly kills you. Draining your life little by little. Trying to play the long game. What? Oh, that was actually insane. That was actually insane. Made him block the roundhouse. Tries to swing back. Oh, here we go. Dual Kevin finally finding an opening. Oh, no. He escapes the corner. Big deal for Idom. And I think it was just a drop of uh, spinning mixer, actually. 
I think you might be right, Steve. Yeah. Crouch fierce, check and duel Kevin. Once more, medium whip. Oh. Anti-air with the low contender. Oh no, that's just the kick, excuse me. High heel kick. Yeah. See, he's been scouting that the entire time. Big damage too. Dang. Full CA. He had it the whole time. I mean, this is going to be put, put pretty close. It's not going to kill him. Yeah, full CA though. Full CA and trigger on the side of dual Kevin. He needs this round. He hasn't even found the space to activate it. Right? Man, poison. Oh. Giving Rashid a lot of trouble right now. Great life on top of it. A well-placed Crouching Furious will do it for Idom. And you can is see this, him. Is this the match? Is this the counter? Is this the counter to Rashid? That extra pressure, letting him cook. Last game, last round. Final, final round. The pressure cooker. Set it and forget it, Steve. It's like you burn your house down, bro. That's oh. absolutely true. <laughs> oh, he doesn't need a house, Steve. He's a world warrior. I guess that's why he ain't got no shoes. Nice that's jump true. in with the empty jump. He ate his shoes. He got hungry. What? <laughs> Turned his shoes into boba, huh? Man, what? Shut up. Shut up. Oh, oh my, my god. god. <laughs> Stop it. Oh. All right, EX, there's the activation. Dash up, there's a throw. Sabin, once again, that life lead slipping a little bit out of his control. Ooh. Samurai tries to jump, gets met with the yoga anvil. There's the activation, gonna try to hold the screen just a little bit. Cook it up ever so slightly. Mm, oh. The EX, you should have known he has such good placement on those. Ryu has one more. You better be careful. No V triggers to fear from either side. Mm. Not yet, at least. Got Samurai does have enough life to build it up, though. He got a little gray life on that, too. Made him spin his last Ooh. bar. EX, this is getting close. 30 seconds left on the clock. Another hit from Sabin. If Sabin does it, it's going to be a pretty big the deal. Air -air. Sabin looking ready right now. Dash up. The pressure is on his side. There's a V reversal. No knockdown. <gasps> one more time. Sabin, and Sabin eliminates snipe. Team Frost. The first match of the set saw Sabin easily handle Sherry Jenix, proving yours truly once uh, wrong once again and rooting for a friend to get a win in Street Fighter League. Sabin's game record with Dawson going into the set with Team Frost was 9 wins and 10 losses and may have been one of the contributing factors to Team Spirit's lack of success this season. With nothing to lose, Sabin also ended up closing the set against a very game samurai, upping his game record to 13 and 11. The more successful teams this season have been able to find ways to win with secondary characters. Are the character specialists the weakest links on teams in the SFL this season, or is this more about winning when the opportunity presents itself with your main, Mortsy? I definitely think it's a combination of the two. It's not necessarily that the character specialists are the weakest, but I think, ah, you know, it's it's hard. Um, even the character specialists that we had, um, so in the previous season, Toy and Idom, obviously they were the weakest links on their teams. Um, due to, actually, I don't even think Idom was the weakest link on his team, even last season. Um even with all the bands, but this season definitely not because he's branched out into another character. Um, even though I'd still say he's a Laura specialist, right? Like he's not necessarily, he's still, it still feels like he's a Laura specialist despite that. Um, you, the big thing I feel is that you need to be, if you're on your main, you need to win game. That's a duh. Um, and fifty for fifty, at least fifty percent of the season, you're going to get to do that. Um, and I feel like that, based on that, your record with on your main, uh, for instance, um, good ones like Shine needs to be winning. Um, JB needs to win all his games, and when he's playing Rashid, Shine needs to be, should be winning when he's got a Buki. Um, those are the kind of times where it's like you have no excuse to lose. Um. When they're on their secondaries, Shine, I think we can say Shine, even though he has branched into other characters, he's an Ibuki specialist. Um, I I don't even know if I can say Adam is, because po his poison's actually really good. Like, it's strong. Um, you need to win on your main, and then you need to pick up as many wins as possible as your secondary. Samurai's a fantastic example. He's taken um, 
a lot of games, a lot of people down with Ryu. Actually, I was talking with uh, Tommy and Rob about how we have never seen a secondary OCB yet. Um, obviously, that's ridiculous. And I not honestly, I was expecting it to be here. Was what I was expecting. Spoilers, I guess, for the rest of the match. I or not spoilers, depending. I didn't say anything. Um, <laughs> so I kind of. I actually expected it to come through here. Um, yeah, I. The most, I'm just trying to get a handle on to actually answer this question, because it's. You need to. The most successful teams are the ones that are going to have their main kind of players win on their mains, but also take make upsets on their secondaries, because obviously that's going to create the highest percentage. The issue is everyone has to do that. It can't just be one person that is doing that because the other people need to also be winning on um, There's kind of an excuse if you're losing on your secondaries, but that isn't going to be what makes you a successful team. You have to also make the upsets. You have to prevent your opponent from winning on their main, basically, is the way it goes about. So um, it's a combination of two of... Um, and the character specialists can be a weak link, I think, for sure. They can definitely, when they're targeted, but it just means there's extra pressure on them on the weeks they have their mains to make sure that they're keeping at that 50 So I think that's probably the best way I can put that. Spliced Helix, um, this season it's sort of showing a little bit more, or a little bit less because of the way the bands sort of work that the secondary, or the... the character specialists are kind of the weak weaker links but it's it's still kind of there is it not it is i think if you i think if you put it on a scale like on a 10 scale with your main being 10 you know um if you don't have a secondary that's at least a six then you're going to be a weak a weak link just just in general because if you have nothing to play half of the season and they target you for the ban you don't have anything to play so pe people with secondaries that are at least that good, you know, at least at least a, uh, one level above half of it, how good you are with your main, then you'll find more success. Like Samurai with Ryu. Yeah, Ryu used to be his main, but obviously he's not anymore. But he's, he's still finding success with it. Not to the level that he does with Akuma, but with enough success that it takes matches and that's that's what you have to do you have to have that in order to make your team better because if you don't then you know you're you're half a player for the entirety of the season do you guys agree that this was a big reason why team spirit is not in the playoffs right now honestly i think team spirit lost games they shouldn't have and that's why they're not in the playoffs yeah, I don't think it, it. I don't think it necessarily comes down to the strength, like the strength of the secondaries. I think it comes down more to the, their their weakness as a, like they just messed up. I don't think the bands have been that good against them. Even then, like they just keep losing against teams, or they keep losing games that they shouldn't have, mm -hmm. or they end up in like main versus main battles and then just lose. And that's just that just comes down to you're just losing. It's not like. Uh, there's no specific reason based on the format that they're losing. They're just not winning. That is 100% accurate as they were the first team eliminated from contention. Six and five with Karen, six and two with Cami, and three and four with Colleen. These are the game records for Team Spirit. Uh, Captain CJ Truth going into the set with Team Frost. According to the stats, he was actually correct to pick Cami. The most successful out of the three characters that he's used this season. The problem is he ran into Samurai. Despite being targeted for the band this week, Samurai's Ryu continues to flourish and ended up taking down CJ's Kami, dropping his overall game record to 16 and 13. How much of Team Spirit's lack of success is on CJ Truth specifically, or did this come down to the rest of the team not being able to pull their weight, Splice Helix? I don't think it came down to just CJ Truth. You know, you've got... If you look at, at Season 1... You've got Samurai. He was that entire team, you know. So with the format for season one, then, yeah, you can be like, okay, if he doesn't perform, 
then what are they going to do because Idom's getting banned? But you don't have that. You don't have that in season two. It's I don't think it can really be centered on one player. I don't I don't think in the format that it's in that you can nail the blame onto one player. Everybody has to play. Um, I mean, obviously as well as they can, but you have to be able to be prepared to make up for the other people on your team simply because there are bans in place. Morty, do you agree? Yeah, I, I agree. I think it's just, and it's on the entire team. I don't think um, CJ Truth is necessarily responsible for the whole thing. I think obviously you'd expect, as he did, because he won the he won the picks in the very the very start of the season. He was the first pick. He won it by beating all the other captains, and then we never saw any of that after. It was there was that one flash of brilliance, and then he just hasn't been able to take the only the real big flash of brilliance we've seen i think this season so far has been him taking down samurai when he did um by beating him at his own game but other than that we've just seen we haven't seen that same strength that we saw from him in that match or through the rest of the season he just kind of got um just hasn't been picking up wins i mean him losing to a secondary obviously it's still samurai playing his game actually that he lost he beat samurai ryu or lost to Samurai Ryu and beat Samurai Akuma. It's like Stranger wow. Things. Yeah, it's it's that's it's... actually kind of wild. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's so backwards, dude. That's crazy. I I genuinely wonder if the matchup is better for Ryu if than it is with uh, Akuma. It just as I'm not obviously I'm not blaming it on the matchup, but I'm curious. Um. So yeah, um, he's losing when he shouldn't, and winning when he, or yeah, he's losing when he uh, shouldn't be, and he's winning against the odds. It's weird. It's a weird thing, and he, I guess he's winning not as often as he should be, basically. Um, and a lot of the time, like especially for the first the first part of the season, he had um, it was Idom who was getting all the bands. It was Idom and Atura who were, was getting all the bands. Can't, he's been pretty free roam almost. Psycho Ben Karen, uh, oh no, Frost Ben Karen, um, last time. So it's just like you. There's no excuse for him losing the way he has been. But right, it comes down. It's a single first to two every time. So it's not as though it's not volatile per se. But it's it's tough. Um, yeah, he needs to. But it still falls on the whole team because I don't think everyone is winning what it should be. I also think the prevalence of G this season is making Idom a little less good. That that's actually uh, an entirely good point. Yeah. As well, that's another kind of tough thing for him. All right. So many players on social media have pointed out that Rashid's tools are among the strongest in the game. On this panel, you, Mortsy, a former Rashid main. I've talked about several of those tools that make Rashid one of the tougher matches matchups to deal with across the board in Street Fighter V. Enter Idom's Poison. In an incredibly seemingly lopsided matchup, Idom managed to stifle the entirety of Duel Kevin's offense and keep Rashid out of threat range, and he made it look simple. Is Poison the answer to dealing with Rashid in this game, or was this more about Idom outplaying and outclassing Duel Kevin? Mortzi. Now it's okay. Because I did play Poison a little bit when uh, she came out. But I think the big... She has tools. She has very strong tools. She beats EX uh, Whirlwind Shot using EX... Uh, um, Love Me Ten. Love Me Tender is the flip. EX is the flip. Love Me Tender. I, I don't know the name of the move. I couldn't tell you. I mean, I figure you guys know them for four because they're, they're pretty much the same. Yeah, I, um, I didn't know names in four either. Other than Sonic <laughs> Boom and Flash. It's LMT. Yeah, it's the flip. So EX Flip is Projectile Invincible. Um... She, the issue is she gets freaking mauled, dude. As soon as she's in, and her escape from the corner is trash. Her jump is so heavy and bad, and her cross up is trash. So, her actual, once she's in the corner, she actually has a really, really hard time getting out of it. Um, her, she's very prone to veer wrestle, uh, that Rashid actually can't deal with. Um, but he, because Rashid is bad in this case. Um, you want to be able to knock your opponent down or because you just reversal the first hit of the whip, right? 
of the first hit of the EX medium, the medium heart raid. Um, and then you can knock her down. But in this case, where she doesn't do anything, he just rolls and she recovers. So um, she has the tools. I think we saw Justin this weekend, this past weekend. I think he played some Rashids and he beat them. Yeah. He... Um, or no, yeah, he beat JB. Yeah. Um, so it's certainly possible. I don't necessarily think she's a necess- like an answer, but I think she's still like able to keep him at a range that he's not comfortable with. She actually outranges the fears or the, the crouch fears, which is really important to kind of working around Rashid's neutral game. Uh, and her anti air is spectacular, absolutely spectacular. Um, so it's it's. I still, in this case, though, I guess got off track a little bit. In this case, I still think it's Idom outplaying Dual Kevin. Or it could also be some unfamiliarity on the side of Dual Kevin. No, this is fair. when this was recorded. It was, uh, she was a very, very new character, right? So it's, you can't go in hard and say, like, oh, my God, Dual Kevin washed, you know? <laughs> no, that, that's <laughs> it's fair. just unfamiliar. We can chalk it up a little bit to unfamiliarity um, and a little bit to um, just, I Dom obviously knowing the character better. Spicy Licks, how did you feel about um, I Dom's poison, and uh, did you feel like it, that it answered Dual Kevin's Rashid well, or does it answer Rashid in general well? I think it. I think it just answers. Uh, well, what you were talking about earlier, the unfamiliarity question. It's you know I Dom has plenty, plenty of experience playing against Rashid, but. You know, how much did Dual Kevin have playing against Poison? It's, at that point, it was, does this, oh, that connects. Does this, oh, that punishes. Oh, does this, oh, I can't do anything against that, you know? And it's, it's a hard thing to deal with when you play against a character that you don't have a whole lot of experience against. And you have to learn the matchup as you're playing it. Or or if you have a little bit of knowledge against it, you know, you're, you're not going to have the same kind of, uh, not even advantage, you're not going to have the same kind of knowledge that you have going into fighting, say, somebody who's been there since Season 1 or Season 2. No, that that's 100% fair. Um, one of those things where I never thought I would see Duel Kevin in Street Fighter League when he's playing Rashid get walloped like that. That was something yeah. something else. And even Mortsy brought up the fact that um, her escape tools are garbage, but he... I don't jumped over Rashid. Like <laughs> that happened, right? That's insane. That's insane. Congratulations to Team Spirit playing spoiler at least for one week. Next up, match number two, Team Inferno at four and four, taking on Team Psycho at two and six. In their previous matchup, Team Psycho and their season one predecessors were going into the match on a 13 match losing streak. 13. Dan Cadiz and his Dalsum proved to be clutch in the moment, not only defeating Punk to clinch the reverse sweep and end the curse, but beating Punk when he was using his main character, Karen. We've mentioned on more than one occasion that Punk has been struggling when unable to play Karen this season, and his team's record doesn't scream reigning and defending SFL Pro US Season 1 champions. After being humbled by Team Frost last week, how will Team Inferno respond against an opponent who is now playing for their playoff lives? Here are your highlights from Team Inferno versus Team Psycho. Get down to the postseason playoffs. Oh, oh, the Another hit. one! Oh, he pressed the button still! Oh, oh, the damage, oh. oh wow. But there's 92 seconds left, and it's already passed. I think it's like 60%. Okay, EX legs. That's gonna give Chun Li trigger though, and here co- come bro legs. EX legs once again spins all his meter, and the trigger's at, uh, activated right now. Anti air gets the flow. Yo, Smug needs to calm down. Broly legs on the run right now. A lot of damage already from Broly legs firing right back with Smug in this V trigger. Absolutely dangerous. Don't get caught pressing a button. It's gonna be a counter and a juggle. Oh no! And that's gonna be 2 0 for Team Psycho Smug versus Broly legs. Yo, automatic popping off. It's finally letting loose. That's what I want to see. Is he going to jump? He's bound to He's do it. He's priming it. Yeah. There we go. Yeah, he's prim- Let him do it again. I got to listen to this, Steve. He's out of here, he says. 
Dashes out of the corner. Go, oh, sir. You gotta again. get the meaty. Put all the meaty on the hot dog instead of in the game. Mm, this is set point still for oh, Punk, and he's getting my. absolutely close to stun. Oh, no, I wow. I'm gonna do a combo DP super crouching. Oh, oh, he said, oh, I'm gonna do a combo God. DP super the crouching. Crap. Watch this, I'm nice. That's literally what he said. <laughs> Big crush right there, had he just waited a little second, but... Oh, Crouching Fear is confirmed. Oh, full conversion, mm -hmm. too. Oh, oh, the last time he used that setup, it was Crouch Strong, meaty enough to get the throw. JB playing him like a fiddle right now. Empty jump throw. This is not looking good for Dankadius. Oh, he tried to get the splat. He was ready with the HP spinning mixer. Oh, the V-reversal this time. Oh, gets the splat. I oh. love him spending that V-reversal. He can still get V-triggered this round. Hmm. Wheel. Yeah, I got the wheel kick towards the later end of the active frames. JP still re punishing the V-reversal against Dangadius. I don't know, maybe Dangadius might have wanted to save it. That's going to be crucial if he had that V-trigger, but still spending that bar. Dash up. Cancel into Z8. That's going to put Dankadius on the not playable list when it comes not to Team Psycho. List. Yeah, man, he's I out like of there. That. He's out of there. Has to be something big. Give me another match at least. Give me some more Street Fighter. I like that. Right out of range dash punch. Can't punch that bad boy. There you go. Play at the range. Get a little great life for your own. Nice chip. That was confirmed. very deep, too. Getting that confirmed from Punk. And now he's trying to push Smug into this corner. Back it away. As soon as, soon as he saw the round off, he's like, all right, I'm going to back off a little bit. Oh, needs to be careful with those dash punches. We know Punk has a keen eye. He knows exactly what he's looking Ooh, for. What you a weren't confirmed. kidding. You were not kidding with the keen eye. Stand strong into the fierce. Mm. Again. CA coming up. A throw. Not if the stun comes first, Steve. All right, activate. The reversal, full CA available for Smug. Yep, that's all she wrote. Oh, and that's going to be that team psych. As mentioned last week, if Inferno lost their remaining two matchups and Psycho won all of theirs, the tiebreaker would go to Psycho. The ban went to Dankadius' Dalsim, a wild card that Punk specifically refused to deal with a second time. Up first for Psycho was Team Captain Smug, and sorry Helix, Broly Lings also didn't get the win like you hoped. Smug, op <laughs> Smug <laughs> opted to go with Balrog, leaving G for teammate Dankadius to cover for the Dalsim ban. Unfortunately, this led to Smug... Or this led Smug right into Punk's Kami counterpick and subsequently ending Team Psycho's playoff hopes. Smug's total game record in nine weeks, 17 and 14 with Balrog. I asked you guys this question about CJ Truth. How much of Team Psycho's lack of success is on Smug? Or did this come down to the rest of the team not pulling their weight as well? Spliced Helix. Same answer. Um, honestly, out of all the teams... I think for better or worse, Team Psycho is the most balanced. So I don't, I don't think that it's necessarily the team captain's going to pull out forty-five million awesome wins by himself. I think it was, I think it was pretty much balanced across all three of them. So not, not that it seemed to matter since they're what two and seven now. Yeah. So I mean. I, I, honestly, I think I think you know whether it's a good thing or a bad thing. It was it was still not a single person, you know, still not nailed down to a single person. But I think I think out of all the teams, that team had the most equal distribution of power. And would you say that that distribution of power was not very powerful? I don't know if it was not powerful as so much as you know the the band balance with the who got to fight who and it was it, there was a lot for team cycle there was a lot of bad luck of the draw a lot of it would you call it a curse you might you might except for except for you know it's a curse unless the team you're fighting gets just a bit too caught <laughs> just because they won the season before and you know. <laughs> 
I, mm-hmm. I, I actually feel absolutely terrible for the next team captain in season three if they have to don that purple jersey for psycho of, yeah of who inherits psycho who inherits the curse is going to be kind of crazy morty talk to me about smug talk to me about team psycho who, who how did this happen with this team okay so if we're talking about a balance team, we're going to be talking about gail if we're talking about a team that stands on two legs and then has a tiny little peen hanging down the middle that's awesome. well i did say, i did say it wasn't necessarily a good balance yeah, no, they're they're balancing on two legs is what they're doing. Those two legs being Smug and Dankadias. Um, does that that made sense? Um, <laughs> but basically, so Dank I think is probably the outstanding performer here, outside of Smug, who's shown flashes of brilliance. Both um, I think the match against CJ is probably a big one, though I think that might be. I mean, it's a vid trigger comeback, right? And it's in a very difficult matchup in the cami and he's against who, someone who might be the best cami on uh, north america right but still he um he didn't show up when you expected him to show up and it was all with balrog which was interesting he's g10 like just didn't find as much success as a lot of people hoped um especially because of given how flashy it tends to be and how unique he plays it whereas danka diaz came through with some big wins um but wasn't able to he gave up i think he threw he didn't throw them but he gave up um, a few matches again that he shouldn't and then they're kind of carrying automatic straight up um but again i think the question that you asked where despite their power their distribution of power being even it i do believe that it's low um i think dank is the best player on that team um the issue being that his mat, like he has so many characters. Obviously, he's going to play Sim. Sim is, Sim is the character he needs to play if he wants to beat people that are also good. But Sim is not exactly a great character when it comes to every matchup. He struggles a lot with some characters, um, and he, I don't think Dank really picked up wins on secondaries either. Um, yeah, did he? What was the? How did it go this time? Yeah, he did play G this time around, and he didn't. He didn't win at all. The only person who won was Smug, and that's because he beat Chun or beat Broly Legs, which isn't that exciting. Uh, I do like honestly, if the t- other teams were weaker, then uh, I would really like Psycho because of the way that they can kind of shift around characters, which is really interesting. Like giving Dank G, where uh, instead of um, him playing another character and Smug playing G. It's almost like they recognize that the Balrog is what's working, mm-hmm. and they opt for that instead. Yeah, the uh, the record, the game record that I quoted um, was mostly Balrog on the part of Smug, which was crazy. Uh, mm-hmm. Smug, of course, has been putting the work in G. Smug's record with G is only 500, and going into this one, Dankadius's record with G was also 500. So hmm. There's actually more than I kind of expected, Yeah, to be honest. The, despite the fact that they're 2-7, and seven, they're still at 500 for their characters there mm-hmm. uh that's, that's is really interesting um also uh heads up that the n- names aren't up there i don't know if you just put them up or something <laughs> thanks i forgot okay. <laughs> <laughs> all right um, that's morty talking spice Helix in the middle tagashi Azrael at the end okay yeah. Um, um yeah no i just feel that it's kind of the team in general just feels weaker straight up um i think they had a lot to work on like they they were probably the team everyone was going in and thinking like they're they're gonna have a rough time and i think even despite that um i think they've overperformed based on what people thought they would do um and they did better than last season psycho so i think people are happy like they put up a <laughs> much better much 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 better fight so far and there's still uh one week left after us there is after one this. week left and they are have they have a 100 percent higher success rate than previous psycho who only had one win they've got two and they, they double uh, the record. They can play spoiler. Like that's how you gotta look at it now. Is yeah. you have to. They'll now they literally have nothing to lose. Yeah. Time to play spoiler and try to to mess, mess up the standings between second and fourth. Uh, we'll get exactly. more into the standings a little bit later. As previously mentioned, Punk opted to go with Cami, the solid counter pick for Smug's Balrog, as we've discussed on the show before. Punk also made quick work of Automatic Sagat. 
and even called out his finish to the online aficionado before executing a critical art combo for said finish, which was absolutely hilarious. I've talked about Automatic's record before. It's almost as bad as when I'm playing Street Fighter in Toronto. After all the consistent losses with Sagat and with one week remaining and nothing left to play for, will we finally see a character switch from Automatic? And if yes, who does he pick? Splice Helix. I have no idea. <laughs> I I certainly hope so. You know, at this point, make it about entertainment. You you got you. There's no there's no character that you can pick that will make up for your record and change it from what it is. So there's no reason not to. But I mean, honestly, I don't know who you go to. Honda, just you know, give me a Honda match in in live SFL play. Give me a Honda match. Mortzi, does he does he make the switch? Does he make a switch? And I who does he pick? Him. There's okay, there's two possibilities. He says he gives he gives up and plays someone else. And I think he would play Zeku, is my guess. That's like if he's gonna swap to another character, I I'm guessing he'll just swap to Zeku for fun. Because I know that's a character that he very much enjoys. Or he says, I still want to try and not just have one win under my belt. And he tries to um stick with Sagat so they can actually maybe pick up a set, another win as opposed to being having only a single set win throughout the whole thing. I think he wants, that's not the kind of note you want to go out on, right? So that's, that was my, my two thoughts. Um, but I honestly, the last week, uh, it can be pretty volatile in terms of character select and bands. It's because people are like, could be fun, right? Could be like, it could be fun. It was like last time we saw um, Toys Bison go on band because they knew it didn't matter, mm-hmm. so they just let it rock, and then it, he lost. <laughs> that is that is true. I, I don't know if you can go any worse than getting your character for an entire season and only winning one game. Or, sorry, one set. Or yeah. You could ask Broly. Yeah, that, that was Broly last season. Yikes. <laughs> that's, a, that's a sucker punch. I'm Yikes. Sorry. All right. <laughs> We talked about player records, individual records before. Here's one that you guys are going to want to hear. JB's Rashid is good. Really good. His game record with Rashid going after this set with Psycho. 16 wins, 2 losses. No doubt that he has, bec- he has been the ace of Team Inferno this season with Punk struggling to assert his dominance and he should be considered as not only Inferno's MVP but arguably a contender for this season's MVP as well. Now that we know the four teams that will be playing in Season 2's playoffs, should Gale, Storm, or Frost look to ban Rashid to stop the defending champions from repeating come playoff time or should they fear that Punk and his Karen might just wake up? Up, Splice Helix. Well, didn't Punk just take out two people on his? He did. So if he's doing that while he's sleeping, then awake might just be too much for anybody. So I don't. I honestly, I don't think it matters. You, you ban one or the other. You, you're either you're either after you're either after the ace JB or you're after the ace Punk. Let me interject for it, one second because you you brought up that he just won two with Cami. One is a counter pick because Cami Balrog is heavily favored in Cami's. That's favor. true. That's and true. the other one was automatic, who's yeah. consistently losing the entire oh. season. I mean, so. It, it, yeah, the wins are okay. And still... It still happened. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it, but it, you've got, I mean, you, it, that's really, it's really what it comes down to is you've got a choice. Do you want to face the strongest character for the the person who's come out as clutch for Team Inferno this season? Or do you want to face the strongest character on the person who's probably the strongest U.S. Street Fighter? That is I have the answer. <laughs> All right. Well, Morty's going to jump in. I'm just going to say it is a very fair point to bring up because the playoffs are actually after the CPT season. They are at Capcom Cup. Punk probably gets out of his funk because he's playing in this or well past what's going on, right? 
or not. or not uh, according to Morty. Aren't they before? Yeah, they already happened, dude. The playoffs have already happened. They have. Okay. Oh, Wait, I didn't like know that. the the, the only thing that happens at Capcom Cup is the US Japan. Uh, so no, the so top two for each region has been determined. Okay. So they for play Japan okay. and US. So at the um, Capcom Cup, um, there's going to be team one team US versus team Japan. Or I think the t- top two US players play, and the top two Japanese teams play. And then the winners. And play then each the other. winners that makes play each other in the final. I thought the playoffs were at Capcom Cup. Okay, so kind of part, the part, part of the match. playoffs have already happened. Let's let's we don't obviously we don't have the results, but no. Talk to me then also, about. Okay, so talk to me then, uh, Morty, about uh, who's more dangerous going into the playoffs. So, firstly, I don't think saying thinking to yourself who is more dangerous against Team Inferno when you're playing against Team Inferno. I think the best way to what you need to be thinking as a team is how do we beat Team Inferno. You don't think who is there? You still you still have to beat everyone. So personally. I think the best way to go about that is by banning Rashid and eliminating one of the threats who's still who's capable of OCVing your team by himself and focusing on Punk and beating him. I don't like the idea of unless he decides to pick Lucia. Uh, but I don't think I, that's going to happen at all the rest no, of this. Not season. anymore. I think he's done with messing around. Um, so I think the best way to go about it is to, like I said, you get rid of, uh, it's like a, he's like the chaotic element in this equation. You remove the variable in JB and so that you only have to deal with the one. There's only one, one variable you're trying to solve punk. That is the punk problem. Um, yeah, I, so I, I would hope people go like, okay, we can effectively Delete. Well, we, we can start by deleting Broly. Uh, and then, Sad but true. He's, he's going to get his first win next week. It's going to uh, happen. I'll, yeah, like he did last week. Um, <laughs> I'll say it every week. <laughs> you'll be right. Never. Um, <laughs> oh. um, you can eliminate. There's two people that you're worried about on Team Inferno, and you can just get rid of one of them. That's like, that is a hell of a deal, dude. So I think you do that every time and just take it and then deal with Punk. Even though he's a, obviously he's a strong player, he's still going to be a strong player no matter. He just beat Bal- or Smog's Balrog and Automatic, but um, he, on a secondary. So I think you you look at... Karen doesn't necessarily... I don't feel like Karen necessarily really pounds any character into the pavement, you know? She doesn't, like... it's punk, Well, Punk pounds you into the pavement with Karen. But Karen, a lot of bees. Wise, matchup wise, doesn't just murder anyone. She beats you through neutral, whereas Punk has this disgusting neutral and pressure. So, you if you uh, ban the Karen, you end up pushing him onto a character that might, or he'll pick a character that smokes one of your characters just, and then leave the rest of JB. So his goal will literally be: all right, who beats the guy I'm playing now? Whereas with Karen, you get rid of JB, and then he's just going to be like, I'm going to play Karen. And that gives you the opportunity to counter with whatever abilities you're capable of counter Not necessarily, not every team is going to have that liberty where they can pick a character that messes Punk up. Um, the issue is that Rashid doesn't have that at all. He smokes fair. everyone. That is fair. Um, yeah, so. I think JB is, in terms of uh, a threat to beating other teams, um, JB is the larger and easier threat to remove. Whereas Punk doesn't budge, even if you ban him. You don't move him as far. Um, yeah. All right. We'll see what uh, teams plan to do. They've got, well, I mean, the playoffs have already, or the first part of the playoffs have already happened. We'll see how uh, how the rest of that plays out for Team Inferno. And it's we'll see if they can actually defend their Season 1 championship on to Match 3. In their previous matchup, this was the battle at the top of the standings. Team Gale, however, showed that Team Storm was simply not experienced enough 
in Street Fighter League or on their level. An absolute trouncing with a 6-1 game record and a 3-0 sweep. This time around, Team Storm looking to show what they've picked up over the course of the season since then. And this time at full strength. Wait, full strength? Yes. Full strength. Team Gale. Also at full strength. An actual battle at the top of the standings. Here are your highlights for Team Storm versus Team Gale. Who do you want to ban this time around, Gustavo? Well, after a lot of uh, thinking and deliberation, um, we're going to ban Ryu. We already saw what Mikey can do with that character. Um, you know, obviously that character's a that character's a problem. We can't have Ryu around. Okay, Ryu's a <laughs> interesting ban here, especially on this team. Knuckles, who'd you like to ban from these guys? I think we're gonna ban Fong because Joey's Fong is kind of scary. He was smoking Rob earlier, so we're gonna ban Fong. Yo, Joey, you got a Fong? Of course. <laughs> All right, it might it might be semi legit. I didn't believe it. All right, so Ryu and Fong. But Rob TV with impeccable defense. First round of game two. Go for it. Wow. No button. Just ran all the way in with the command dash. A four throw. Rob TV. Oh. Yeah, he was ready for it. He was ready that. that. Stun. Mm. But it's not going to be enough. We might see a reset. Oh, just full damage. Oh, no, it is a reset. I told you, Steve. I called it. I told you all along. That was 100% a view reversal attempt. No, that definitely was. Dude's looking over here. He's like, no, I don't like the, I don't like the look. You're lying. Sean has never used that. But I've never seen Sean use that. <laughs> no, trying to call out the sweep. Not gonna work. Oh wow. Oh hmm. no, sit him down. Reset. Same side. Nice block there from Shine using the view reversal properly this time. Instant challenge too. Nice, that stand light kick just to get to confirm. The jump out by Shine, gonna spend a little meter, taps him on the legs on the way out. Light beat in favor of Shine this time around. And there's the back dash. Very weary is Shine, he's in that range for the drop kick. There's the view reversal. All right, Shine counting on finishing this Yo. without the trigger. That's gonna be a lot of damage and it's gonna recover back to gray life, but it's probably gonna give her trigger or really close to it. Oh. That's gonna give him trigger. The Kaneko Man Buster just way too much damage. Shine now does have trigger. Mojo and has to stay grounded. Shine can't snipe him out of the air. If that's the case. Oh. Man, this song is it's, it's hitting. It's kicking. It goes for the view reversal. Okay, alright. Oh, not enough. Mm. The meaty stand strong was all it took. Amazing. They go so far and it's such a great buffer. Normal. We're seeing it in full effect here. Tied up in game two. Strider trying to hang on. No anti airs available. He's been getting more consistent with those anti airs. Those side switch again Jeez. worked out like it did in the first game. Oh, hit this time. Back throw. So Ugh. smart. He needs this round. 801 Strider Another needs this round. Grab. And he has full CA. This is good. Power of the earth. No, no, no. Wake up, EX. Oh, we got clipped by it at the last second. That V school barely shown and rarely hit. Oh, that's deep. That wasn't a punish. You're right, Steve. I'm glad she literally took the word right out of my look me in the eye and stole my word. I understand. See, yeah, uh, will uh, kick would have worked. Too far for the command grab and knuckle do. Proving he's the superior player. First match of the night for this set. Saw friends of the show take each other on as Rob TV and his Karen went up against Tommy Two-Step and his Urian. We had mentioned Tommy Two-Step has played very well throughout the course of the season. His game record of 15-11 has pulled some weight for Team Storm, with almost all of those losses being close. The one exception, unfortunately, was the previous matchup against Team Gale. His opponent in the previous matchup, also Rob TV, also his Karen. Rob, after this win, is 14-7 for Team Gale this season with Karen. Can we sufficiently say that the chip on his shoulder from Season 1 
for being left to the end is officially gone and that Rob TV has proven to be one of the strongest competitors in Street Fighter League Pro US. Mortzi. Uh, I think we can certainly say that. I think um, the... And I can speak of this... Uh, actually, so, okay. Quick little thing is that I did spend a lot of the weekend hanging out with Rob and with Tommy Two Step. So, one... It was really interesting to hear their um, kind of behind the scenes look into the dynamic of not only the matchups, um, but just how things were ran at SFL. Um, also, um, I was given kind of a front seat to see the monumental improvement and strength of Rob TV. Damn, dude, that guy's good. He was hooking up. And I think the fact that um, like things have really launched for him i think since the first season of sfl and now the second season where he's had the support system of knuckle do and shine and they've i mean it's not just him being supported but they're kind of supporting each other but them being able to kind of seek solace and advice from each other is such a positive environment and experience for all of them you can tell how much they've improved and kind of um excelled in this format uh, and just as players in general outside of knuckle do and o2 canada cup um he went o and do um that was brutus's really? joke on the record that was brutus's joke <laughs> i'm stealing it yeah uh, but on that note and one other thing is that when we were talking about because we were watching it live um uh, live uh we were all watching it as it was going rob and um Tommy had it on their phones. And um, Rob, Tommy, the first thing Tommy says, is this the one where you cooked me? To be fair, he got um, cooked twice. He did get cooked yeah, twice. Yeah, that's so. true, that's true. Um, but it was really funny to just hear um, that kind of feeling. But Rob was hella feeling himself. Not just through, not just in this, but also at Canada Cup. The dude was feeling himself really hard. Uh, and I don't blame him. He deserved, he, he's just recently sponsored. Uh, and he did, I think he did really well at ECT as well, didn't he? Yeah, he did. Yeah. Um, so, all the more power to him. Anyways, so, I guess that kind of all relates to the, the question at hand. I don't think, because we talked about how he had a chip on his shoulder, but I just think at this point, he, within this environment that he is in, he has just been able to excel and continue to develop as a player and get stronger and stronger and stronger. Um, and it just shows like like I said, I even talked to him about it, how he's just looked so good and he's like and he was also very humble about it, which was which was good. But in a way, because he half of the time he's going, Yo, I'm so fucking sick. <laughs> I mean, As he deserve and that's like he, rightfully so. Rightfully so. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Um like he cooked Idom when they played, right? Like it's and that was I think probably the most one of the most important wins that he's had this season. But in this one um he has i think he has proven he's to no longer just because he was the last pick he has proven to be more valuable than some of the other early picks in the draft that um that were taken in even in this draft even in this draft i think a lot of people would rob would be one of their first picks spliced helix talk to me about rob tv where's the chip on his shoulder now well, I think the chip's gone, honestly. I, I think he's moved past it just because he performed well enough in season one. I mean, they got second place in season one. At that point, you're, it doesn't matter if you were the last draft pick, you're in second place. Second only to freaking the, the punk. I mean, and, you know, I mentioned it a, a couple episodes ago uh, as far as MVP talk. You know, it was uh, brought up the last the last topic with uh, JB, but I said before that if you're talking about value for your team and how solid that Rob has gotten, and it just keeps increasing. So, you know, if you're going, I think if you're going to talk about MVP this season, it's going to be between one of those two. I I think he's I think he's improved. I think yeah. To answer your question, he's definitely one of the strongest in Street Fighter League right now. Mortzi. Uh, I just wanted to point out that when I was talking to Rob about 
MVPs and most and the value that players bring to the team, he mentioned that last season Shine was their most valuable player because he kept getting banned. <laughs> of, course, of course, we had that discussion. What I, I had... was a huge advocate for that, which is yep. why I said that I think that Idom was the most valuable player because he kept drawing bands and oh, enabling Samurai to play. So I just wanted to let you guys know that I am All right. particularly validated. <laughs> all right. No, that that's fair. That's fair. I mean, we can have this MVP conversation all we want uh, until they actually institute the award. Then we'll have to we'll have to see. Maybe they'll let us vote on it because we're the reporters of of the actual of the actual season. <laughs> Anyways, moving on uh, from the last pick, the last well, not even a pick, just taken from season one to the first overall pick. Shine was picked on for the target ban throughout the course of Season 1. In Season 2, with the ban restrictions rule, we expected to see Hizabuki put in some work. So far, has it been great? After defeating Mojo's Mika, his game record with Ibuki this season. An average 7-5. and five, With one week remaining in the regular season. Now we can argue that Season 1, Shine never got to play... But his Ibuki play in Season 2 hasn't really flourished. Shine was the first overall pick in the inaugural season of Street Fighter League Pro US. Let's put this in real sports terms. Is Shine a draft bust? And the beneficiary of both the format and the solid play of the rest of his team? Spy Steelix. Oh, we went real sports. Oh, feels so good. <laughs> um, I think... When he was drafted, he was a bust simply because of how the format was. Because he never got to play, he never got to play a bookie. He, he didn't in season one. So, I mean, we did what once and he lost and, and he lost. So, in season one, when he was drafted, 100% draft bust, 100%. Not his fault completely, except for that one mm-hmm. loss, but. As a, as a result of the situation, yes, you know that would be like, oh look, you got drafted number one in the NFL draft and walked onto the stage and blew out your knee. That's a draft bust, you know. It's that I, I mean, if you blew out your knee walking on the stage, you shouldn't be in the NFL anyway. But you know, it's a he didn't have a choice for season one. Season two, he's got he's got his stuff and he's still almost a fifty percent. So I don't know. He wasn't drafted this year, so you can't really call him a draft bust for this year. But if you're going off the draft and when the draft was done, absolutely a draft bust. But his the same roster carried over into season two, so arguably he's still the first draft pick for season one and season two because he didn't have to get drafted again. So then season- you're not a, then you're not a draft pick for season two at that point. Okay, you don't play your rookie year. True. All right. Well, we'll go with that. Morty has a lot to say, and I, I have something to chime in on as well, but go ahead, Morty. Yeah. Everything you said was wrong. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, first of all, um, Shine was one of the, I think Shine was a no-brainer uh, first pick last year um, in terms of not necessarily, not just his strength as a player, um, but due to the format and due to the pool of players available. Shine was, um, I mean, you could argue Samurai, right? At this point, you could easily argue Samurai uh, in terms of, because Shine was an online, no, Shine was a Vodin. So Shine, Shine was, was by far the best Vodin, I think, that you could get in this uh, in the first uh, one. I think Brian F. was the only one who really comes close from last season. I can, if I can, as far as I can remember, because it was like Chicote, uh, Shine, uh, there's six. I'm not gonna remember yeah, them all. Yeah, we got yeah. yeah. I was, I was um, about to ask, but keep going. Cl- oh, shine, Chicote, Classico, Burly legs. Um, did Duel Kevin get voted in? He wasn't the captain. Nephew was the captain. Up to was snuff. Duel Kevin a vote in? I can't remember. Up to snuff. snuff. Up to snuff was snuff a vote. Was an online winner. Yeah. Oh, the Duel Kevin was a vote in. Yeah. Yeah, Duel Kevin was a vote in, and then one more. Um, I don't remember. Uh, it was on Psycho. Anyway. Oh, Psycho. No, Psycho won online. Yeah, Psycho. Oh, yeah. Psycho was an online winner as well. Uh, Classical was a voting. Okay. 
Um, but I said that. Uh, anyways, anyways yeah. <laughs> so due to the format, it basically meant we have Shine on our team. We get to play. We, they're basically like putting Shine out in the doghouse outside and going like, now we get to play. <laughs> that was basically what it was. They're like, by picking Shine, one, other teams, don't. we don't have to deal with the boogie. Um, two, now every single team has to ban Shine. That is, that is amazing. That is spectacular. That is I'm gonna pick, I can pick now, and knowing that both of both myself as Knuckle Do as a captain and whoever I pick next is or uh, pick last, um, I guess you don't really pick them, but nonetheless, um, can just go and do whatever we want. Um, on top of that, because he picked him first, that means uh, because he picked his vote in first, that means that he gets the last remaining, um, the last remaining. Online, online winner and they're guaranteed to be a strong player um so i think that was a very very solid he by picking up that the best one especially the best one to draw a band like like i said like i literally just finished saying the fact that um he drew bands for the entire season and do and rob just got to play unhindered was spectacular for them um on top of that your analogy for walking on being a draft pick and walking on stage and hurting your leg or like whatever was bad because he never got to it was more like <laughs> it was more like he got drafted first overall and then they told him he could only throw with his bad arm that's i i like that one actually that's that's pretty good damn right <laughs> for for a quarterback if if okay yeah. all right here here's my two and cents that's you cannot i don't think you can blame him for a bad performance but, he's not allowed to throw with his good arm but that doesn't do, but your whole explanation has nothing to do with shine though that's that's knuckle do that's good strategy from knuckle do but that if, if we're talking about drafts you don't draft a player for strategy you draft a player for how good they play and the whole re- he's but shine is an amazing player i think this season he hasn't done as well as he should have with shine, the shine is an amazing player that's why he took him first i'm not saying he's not a good player I'm talking no, about the not. draft he cannot be a draft bust in the if if you're looking at just season one, he's the furthest thing from a draft bust because he did exactly what he needed to do as the player on that team. He lost wow. every game that he played as jury. That's not the point. That's yes, not the point. Is. He was yes, still drafted is. first. That's that's the definition of a draft bust. If you get drafted first and you do nothing. That's a bust. I'm not saying the guy's not good. I'm not saying that the strategy. Wait, wait, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. I, ha- I have he... to. I have to interject because you said he did nothing, which is not true. He did, he did the most, the best thing he could have done, and prevented the every other team from getting you as a bad. Every every other team's game plan was to shut down Shine. Period. End of discussion. When he is the focal point. It's like saying, so uh, if it's like, I guess I have to use hockey here because I don't know any players in football, but it's like when uh, in hockey, if you have to dedicate two players to covering Ovechkin and then Ovechkin never scores and you're going like, what the hell? Ovechkin's terrible. When there's four, it's basically a four on three for the entire time. That's not Ovechkin's fault. Yeah, I'm not saying he's a bad That's player. A good thing that Ovechkin is drawing people away and that's the same thing that shine is but when ovechkin got drafted do they have a draft in hockey yeah they do he was drafted number okay one over when he got when he got drafted was he drafted to pull two people off or was he drafted to play well of course he was drafted to play but that doesn't change that's the that's my that's oh, my point with the analogy other teams still have to strategize around yes yes teams. The teams have to strategize. That's not. That's not. If the analogy was something other than a draft bust, I 100 percent agree with you. But the analogy was a draft bust. It's not an analogy. Well, the analogy isn't a draft bust. The analogy. The the analogy is shine a draft bust. Hockey is shine a draft bust. No. Yes. (laughs) I knew that. I knew. I don't even think this is something that's objective. I think it's like, or sorry, this isn't something that's like subjective. This is like objectively, he was not a draft bust because he forced other teams to play around, play around him. But he was a draft bust because he, when his gameplay wasn't where a number one draft pick should be. If you're looking at 
the way that you're supposed to do it. Okay, yeah, so what, I, I understand where you're coming from, and I agree with you that <laughs> okay. that he was good for the strategy. I do. I agree with you on that point. It's it's the way the analogy was set up that I don't. Okay, uh, let, okay. let me just. Tova's say, fault. This that, is Tova's fault. Yeah. On no. that note, no, no, no. On that note, then every other first draft, every other first pick was a bust. If by your logic, every single, regardless of who do picked, if he picked Samurai first, Samurai would have been a bust. If he picked uh, Idom was a captain, he was a bust because they got banned for the whole season. That doesn't make any but sense. Would you would you have banned in, in season one? Would you have banned Samurai for the whole season? If he was on another team, yes. Why? Because the the only reason the only reason that he was not banned was because he was on Idom's team, but he turned into what is arguably the MVP for season one. So if you put him on Dew's team instead of Shine, do you think they're going to target Samurai off the bat? Yeah. Really? <laughs> yeah. Okay. That that's a very yeah. interesting point. The only point that I wanted to bring up with regards to this, the way the draft process worked in season one, we talked about this before the before the Street Fighter League even started. We did a preview. We said the draft system was slightly flawed, but with, with the way they set up the exhibition matches, and then you had to pick one of the two that played in the match, Shine is the only one that lost his exhibition that match. That wasn't the case, by the way. That was you, not the case? The captains chose who they wanted to see, and they had already made up their minds of who they wanted to see play. Okay. And they, but they still had to draft between them having one of those to pick two. between the two. They chose the one. two. Yeah, but they chose right? the two to play. Yeah, they okay. chose. So they were still drafting from the whole pool. They okay. just chose two to play. And but decided. Shine lost his exhibition and still got picked first, which is I think is very interesting. And now that I don't we're think it, so but, it was the first Yeah, I don't but, think it matters. Okay, but now that we're looking at how he's performed now with Ibuki, can you argue that he's a draft bust now? No. Okay. Just wanted to know I still, that. I still well, no, he he wouldn't be a bust now. He's he's almost even. If he was a number one pick with, with an even you know, before before the draft, then it might alter a little. But he was he was picked number one last season. Like I think, if JB had been drafted, if Knuckledoo had drafted JB instead, then we would be having the conversation of was JB a bust? And obviously, that would be a no. Because like I don't think with this format you can call someone a bust if they draw bans for the entire. All right. No, that's fair. Who was the number one pick this season? The format itself. I think that makes it very hard to call some bust when they basically invalidate the format by themselves where the entire season is spent focused on them. Okay. That just that just shows their value as a player. Very Which, quickly about this season then, because we did have a draft this season as well. I was referring to the collective of a whole year's worth of uh, Shine playing. Hmm. CJ Truth, first overall pick. Picked Idom. Was he a bust? No. Splice Helix is still thinking about it. I'm thinking. His Laura record, we'd have to look into, but. Um, who are the other tournament winners? Uh, See, that's that's hard. That's hard though, because Mojo, just because of Samurai. The... Samurai. No. Uh, Mojo Samurai. Um, Dank, Dank. and Idom should be one more. Should no, be four. only four. Yeah, and Idom four. Yeah, yeah. So the only one you it's, could it's even... hard to it's hard to say if if he'd be a bust for this year because the format changed okay. just just off the bat. All right, let's leave that topic at that. I knew you guys were going to get a little heated when I brought up an <laughs> actual sports discussion on an esports show about an esports league. Let's finish off. The action. We've been talking about uh, player game records all day. Wait till you hear this one. Knuckle Dew's run in this season of SFL shows he's playing like a man possessed. Regardless, of, regardless, excuse me, of his character selection, Knuckle Dew has found ways to win time and time again. Some in dominating fashion. Sixteen and three with G. Two and zero with both Cami and Mika, and the only blemish against JB's Rashid led to his guile being one and two, where he dominated almost the entire set. Anyways, 
he opted to go with Cammy in the G matchup and notched another two game wins under his belt with his overall record through nine weeks at an astounding 23 and 5. While G has been carrying the weight for most of his wins, Knuckle Dew hasn't shown any significant signs of weakness with any of the other characters that he has played so far. For the playoffs, your Inferno, Storm, or Frost, do you go after Knuckle Dew's G in the hopes that one of his other secondaries crack or continue stopping Shine from having any momentum, Mortsy? I think this is probably a similar situation on the Punk problem where you, you take out Shine uh, as well and just leave and focus. The issue with these is that like JB and uh, Punk play very, very solid characters. Right? They're not volatile. <laughs> Do and Shine play very volatile characters. Uh, G and Ibuki. And they're very like, oh, I'm winning. And then, oh, I lost. That's, that's like you win for 60 seconds and you die. And that from full health. Like that is an, an entirely a possibility. Um, so I think that, again, you're trying to minimize the amount of volatility that there is. Um, not necessarily in game. It's harder with these two because both of these characters can OCB. Both of these characters, I know, uh, obviously, both of the characters with Inferno can as well, but they're much more. I'm winning because I'm playing well, and not necessarily I'm winning because I'm guessing wrong or I'm guessing right, um, or because my opponent is guessing wrong. Yeah, that's it right there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and obviously, they're very both. They're still very strong players, so I'm not trying to discredit them. Um, but these characters are much more volatile. So I feel that these are this the choice behind who they ban here is a lot more up in the air compared to one with Inferno. But I still think that they lean towards getting rid of Shine because it's uh it the Kami from Dew is still very good. The Mika, the Guile, they're all very, very strong secondaries. Um whereas I still think Shine's Colleen, it's fine, but it's not near any of the what Dew can bring out. Um and then you still have to deal with Rob. So I feel like being able to even just eliminate a single person from the lineup before you start is the best possible strategy for me. So I'm imagining they're just still going to get rid of Shine Zabuki so that they can focus on beating Do and Rob. Splice Telix is tomorrow the last time we're going to see Shine Zabuki. No, I don't think so. I don't. I don't think they'll let him out. Just, just agreeing with what Morty said. You don't you look at the secondaries. You phrased that wrong. You phrased that wrong. Did I? I? Yeah. I asked yeah. if this tomorrow was the last time we were going to see Shine Zabuki. And you said, oh, yeah. you meant they're going to yes. gonna ban it. Yeah. Oh, as for, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, sorry. <laughs> yeah. He, he <laughs> meant yes, ladies as... and gentlemen. He meant yes. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. I don't exactly what Morty said. You know, you've got people with secondaries that are solid, or you've got Shine. And it's a Buki. I have a bias against Ibuki for some odd reason. Hmm. Hmm. Couldn't imagine what it would be. Um, of course, then again, I got one for, for G, too. It's not as bad this season, but it's up there. I completely agree with what Morty said. It, you you have a, a ban where it takes out a person. You do it. Just because if you go to ban somebody for Knuckle Dew, he's just going to switch to somebody else. So and he's going to do... Oh, no, no, finish your thought. Sorry. He's, he's going to do. All right. So, seven and five with Ibuki is shine right now. There's no temptation to, to go after 16 and seven and Karen off of uh, Rob TV? I don't think so. I mean, that that just takes Guile away from Do, but he's still got everybody else. And Rob still has Guile. Morty? Um, I think that because Karen is less volatile, that the, it's more like, we know what Rob does, we know how Karen plays, let's focus on, one of us can just beat him at being solid, or volatile, either or, and that's something you can do, whereas these other characters are like, I could be winning, and then I could be losing, and those are very quick it's a very, very quick change. It's as fast as an EX rush punch into and block, and now you got to guess, right? So you have to... I don't think they do ban the character just because 
it's you can ban whoever you want now. And I think that Shine will be the priority. Or at least Shine or Do will be the priority. And if you're Inferno and you ban Karen, then Punk doesn't have Karen. Also true. Good point. Very good. All Much right. harder overlap. So, based on our stats and predictions from last week, this last set, we got hella wrong. Not gonna lie. Nobody saw Ryu and Fong getting banned. Splice Helix and myself didn't get our under hope underdog hopes right for a win either how did we do everywhere else and what do we have for the last week of the regular season let's crunch some numbers with the panel's top cpt point getter talk to us about numbers mortsy yeah go morty okay i just had to quickly refresh to make sure everything i had was correct um and uh, it was um so a couple things just to start off as we always do going over the previous week's bands and uh our predictions so uh for week 10 gale storm no one got anything right because they both decided to do like uh, toga guess the the winner right um uh, and then spice helix and i did not um both of us guessed technically storm get our low helix said if uh gale would win if g was banned and if not, then Storm would win. Uh, it couldn't be further from the truth. Um, they opted to ban Fang, and very considerate of them, considering, uh, you know, I might just show up. Yeah, they just didn't want you to play. That's yeah, all. Yeah, yeah, like. no, you were you were on the bench on the emergency call. You were the third goaltender. Most <laughs> most feared man at SFL is on our bench. Very kind of them. Um, <laughs> although technically. I have placed all three of Team Gale at the Canada Cup. I just you want did. to point that out. You did. There, that, that, that is a number. That is a fact. Shine was in my pool. 20 CPT points, baby. Oh, yeah, brother. Uh, Shine was in my pool as well. <laughs> and, uh, so I'm the one who got third. Yeah, with that uh, seven so, and five Ibuki. Oh, man. It was Gino. Sorry, I'm feeling myself here. In a pool with Gino. And a Your pool, pool with was Alpha, stupid. A pool you with actually, Shine. You... I got third. You actually lost to Team Liquid. That's fucked up. So okay. okay, now can I just point out that Valle kind of reverse OCVG there by calling you Morty. He did. He hit me with the Morty, and I there's no coming back from. That. That's a mix up. You just don't block. Yeah, it's not. I'm not blocking that one. Yikes! Uh, <laughs> find find Rick for your next Halloween costume. Okay, keep, keep it coming. <laughs> My roommate's name is Rick. No joke. Uh, no joke. Uh, yeah. <laughs> anyways, um, and then. Yeah, so uh, Gale won, obviously. Toga's the only one who guessed Gale, so that's very good for him. Um, and none of us guessed the bands, obviously, because they opted to. And now, I did talk to Tommy, and I did talk to Rob, and they apparently gentlemen to no band. Huh. So they, yes, they made an agreement before to be like, let's fight all out and see how it goes. Um, so there's my, that's my insider information. Um so that was why they opted for the Ryu and they opted for the um, the Fang ban. Although Fang is a threat, he must be dealt with. <laughs> uh, for Inferno Psycho, everyone uh, that one wasn't really a debate. Obviously, with Inferno coming out on top, although um, it was nice of Auto or a uh, nice smug to pick up a win over Broly Legs. Um, I don't think you're gonna really. A lot of times, you're not gonna three zero Inferno. Um, just due to the fact that someone has to beat Broly Legs. So it's generally they if they do win, it's a three one at minimum margin. As just He's gonna uh, get one next week. Yeah, yeah, you say that every time. Yeah. Um and the bands were also correct, so that was great. Um and once again with Spirit and Frost, we were correct with um we were very right in the bands. Unfortunately, both of you were wrong. And I was right with Spirit coming out on top. Whereas both of you said Frost would win, I'm the best. But uh, I, I said, I said, I said, I said playing playing upset would be very awesome yes, to see. They I, could, they could spoil. You're right, but at the end of the day, you still get Frost. I did, I did. <laughs> and um, yeah. So on that note, we're gonna talk about next week's the final week's matches. Now these matches are. Very, very important. Um, the other important thing is that none of the tied teams are playing each other. Yeah. I was all about to say. Inferno, Frost, and Storm all play the teams that are locked in their position. So, um, 
for the record, the team of the schedule for next week will be um, Gale versus Frost, which means that they are in the worst position due to obviously Gale being the strongest team currently. Inferno versus Spirit and Storm versus um, Psycho. So uh, obviously the implementation or the impl- implication implementation. Nice. The, impl- <laughs> the implication here is that Frost has the hardest schedule. Um, they really needed to clutch out a win last, like them not winning last week puts them in a very, very poor spot to, they could, honestly, they could be in second right now and they yeah. could have gotten, uh, if they had beaten spirit, which is they needed to do and they did not. So this means that right now they're the most likely team that's going to end up getting, uh, fourth place, which yeah. means that they will have to play Gale come playoff. Back to um, back. Woo. But we are going to first talk about the other matchups because that is the matchup that I have determined or I feel that is the most even in terms of pick band advantage. So first, let's talk about Inferno Spirit. Um, the last time these two teams met, uh, Inferno banned Laura and Spirit banned Rashid, as they do, as they appropriately do um, when you fight against your other against these teams. So. In this case, I actually believe that Spirit goes into this next one with an due to um, they have one they had to do with Laura. Laura exists. Laura's a no one on um, Team Inferno plays a character that crushes Laura. Whereas uh, G has been, I guess, kind of the answer so far to Laura. Uh, I guess. I mean, Rob beat it with Karen, right? She can sweep under the collapse, which is also very important. I think Crutch Medium Kick probably goes under as well, most likely. Um, they but can ban Karen, though, can they? But, can, yeah. Exactly. They are capable of banning Karen, as they did ban Rashid last time. So, um, Inferno is either capable of banning most... And I'm most likely expecting either a Dalsam or a Kami ban. Um, and following that, Spirit will most likely ban Karen. Unless they're feeling wild and they want to ban Chun-Li, but I don't see that happen. Um, So on that note, in terms of pick and ban, and uh, I guess in terms of the bans, currently, Spirit has the favor. Um, Whether or not they win, obviously, is up to how they play. Uh, They still have to deal with JB Rashid which is a force to be reckoned with by itself, and they still have to deal with Punk Secondary. Um, due to have them having to deal with Punk Secondary, I'm leaning a little bit towards a Dalsam ban um, on the note that it still leaves Punk to play. Um, but I still give the advantage over to Spirit because that means um, either they do have to deal with CJ Truth Kami um, or they'll have to deal with CJ Truth Colleen. Um because obviously he can't play Karen if they're going to bank. So it's, there's actually quite a bit of secondary overlap uh, with the primary overlap, or the main overlap, um, this time around, which makes them interesting, but I think they're pretty much set in stone in terms of what their the strategy, or what the optimal strategy will be here. So uh, are there any notes from you guys for this matchup that you're thinking about? I, I personally feel that it's pretty set, but uh, if there's anything you guys want to add... Uh, it's it's gonna be a Dalsim ban. Uh, Punk has already stated that Dalsim is a bit of a wild card that they can't. There are some instances where he just can't deal with it, um, yeah. especially when he has a secondary, or he, especially because he will have a secondary. Mm-hmm. Um, so I I agree that Karen is gonna get banned. It's going to be Dalsim. It's going to be Inferno because I'll take JB's sixteen and two win win loss record over mm-hmm. anything that Spirit will do. Okay, that's fair. No, yeah, I, I I agree with the with the. Dalsam ban too, unless they get into some kind of foolishness. Um, that I don't. After that, it becomes a question of who Punk plays. I also think that it's Cammy the, or... the question is whether or not Punk cares. Do they finish second, third, or fourth? Because if he doesn't that's care, actually, that's actually a good point. So, that's a very good point. So they because, could just toss this match away because they don't really care. Yeah, because the the most important thing is they can't get first. So does Punk actually care where he falls on the ladder, or it, does it turn into you know whatever it is? Like, is he and is that, he okay with finishing five and five? Is, is, that depends on how deep his strategy goes. Because does he want to play against the fourth place team 
or the you know the second place team you know whoever whoever they they snake out to mm -hmm. as opposed to fighting gail mm. so i'm operating under the assumption that punk is tired of losing and tired of being told that he's he's probably. struggling and losing is, and he wants to go in strong for the playoffs that, so. um, it is worth to note that even if they end up five and five and frost ends up five and five they're still in uh, third that's true uh so they still win the tiebreaker so they could lose here and assume gail smokes frost um, which again, you gotta be careful though, because Samurai exists. Mm -hmm. Um, next up, um, we're gonna talk oh, about. Uh, wait, one more thing for, yeah, for yeah. Inferno versus Spirit. You're gonna say, um, Broly gets a win, and it's it's a 3 0. It's a you think this, it's a 3 0. This is the week. This is the week. Everybody right. gets a win on Team Inferno this week. Okay, cute. Uh, <laughs> um, I still, so I'm of the mind, Inferno can most can win, but I think that Spirit has the advantage, is basically what I'm, uh, has the advantage in terms of character picks. Okay, but who are you picking, um, before we move on, who are you picking? This one, I'm picking Spirit. This one's not up for debate, guys. This is, okay. I, yeah, uh, if you, I'm not, I don't, I, this, I, I'm leaving the, the quest, the, um, who, to, for Gale, uh, Frost. Okay. These are the other the other, these yeah, are, these are the ones okay. are okay. just gotcha. my predictions. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay. Yeah. Um for uh Psycho versus Storm. Now this one uh a little interesting as Storm ban chose to ban Balrog initially. Um because obviously I guess interesting. It basically means again, this is one of the ones where neither team is banned G. Uh, we might see a gentleman. I was gonna say we could. I don't know how they're feeling, um, but this is very important because, I mean, honestly, if they could all lose and the standings would still be static, mm -hmm. right? But if one of the teams wins, like, I think actually Team Storm is in a pretty sweet position here because they could lose and they still beat any either yeah, of the other they, teams they that lead, win. They lead the tiebreaker. They lose. Yeah. yeah, they win the tiebreaker at every single time. So Storm's in a nice kind of position here that they can do whatever they want. I don't think they're going to lose. Uh, one um, storm. Uh, Psycho has shit banned. Mm -hmm. Um, they could ban Urian. Uh, they could choose to ban G because Barog can be banned this time around. So that then they can just rock whatever they want. The issue being that Sim is going to be banned. <laughs> yeah, Storm is banning Sim. That is, I don't even think that's up for debate. They could leave it up because uh, G is an answer. But I don't think that they do because I think Psycho will get rid of G. Um, Psycho could ban Urian, but I just, I really don't see it, man. Um, so with yeah, Dalsim and with Dalsim and G banned, let's say that that's the case. Yeah. Dekadius is probably playing Urian. Yeah. I don't see him playing Blanca again. That that's sort of my two cents. Yeah, that, especially with Tommy on the other team, they exactly. wouldn't ban. They wouldn't do it because exactly. Urian is one of. If not his worst, uh, second worst matchup. Mm -hmm. Behind, uh, maybe it's of the top four. Birdie, uh, Birdie, Sakura, Urian are the the really really bad matchups. For Blanca. Okay, so I only Brilliant. have I don't really have a prediction for who's gonna win this one. If you're putting mm -hmm. putting me on the spot to pick, Storm's gonna win. Um, yeah, oh, my... I, I I agree yeah. with that. Okay, so the bold prediction that I have is that automatic hovers random select and hits go. He what, sorry? He will hover random select, and then we're going to play a match. He is going to randomly select his character this, this That would time. be fun. That'd be that very, would be very... great, because he hasn't shown his character depth, and he's 1-9 with Sagat, or whatever the heck it is. I don't even know the stat anymore. Some, something mm -hmm. ridiculous, where his percentage is less than 10. Um, he, he, he's... Well, you got, I mean, you got, you got Storm, too, with their, uh, <laughs> their random bands. Um, what happens if they pick Sagat? What happens if they ban Sagat? Then, then I'm absolutely 100% behind the random select pick. Yeah. Oh, man. My, uh, my only thoughts, I guess, with this game are that they might gentlemen. That genuinely might happen just because, um... Redemption gentlemen? Uh, the thing is, I think Storm is so much stronger if they gentlemen. Oh, yeah. yeah Storm I... is so, 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 so strong. Um, and I... G just fucking wrecks Sim. So if they gentle like gentleman in here means that sure Sim is available, but that means that his like one of his worst matchups is also available. So it 
yeah, you can depend on Dank to try and win some games, but you're still going against like one of your worst matchups, one of your volatile matchups too. Um, so yeah, I'm I'm also on the storm, the storm drain, the storm train. Um, uh, oh man, yeah. yeah. Sorry, I shook my head oh. on that one, and I tell some, I tell some, I tell some bad jokes. I write some terrible jokes on this show. That was awful. That was come. fantastic. What are you talking oh, about? <laughs> All right, and now lastly. We have Frost versus Gale. Now, Frost win. In our first... <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> Let me talk. Uh, in our first week that these guys played, we had Akuma and Ibuki banned, as that makes sense. Unfortunately, what that means, Akuma will be available this time around. Um, but Ibuki is also available. And Ibuki is a good character. Ibuki can stun Akuma and succinctly kill him in one combo. Uh, or I guess two combos, basically. Um, so, this is going to be tough. Uh, I felt it was fairly even in terms of bans because not only... Uh, this time around, I were expecting Rashid from Gale. Uh, I don't think that... We're not going to see a Nakali ban. We've established that. The, no one's going to be Inferno again and do that. Um, there's just no stake. There's no stake for Gale to not ban Rashid, basically. Um, on that note, um, I'm surmising that Frost is either going to ban Karen or Jeep. Um, obviously they can't ban Ibuki, so they're just going to ban one of the mains of the other people. Um, I think either are fully possible, just because you're still dealing with whatever else. Um, or I guess you're trying to give your you're trying to give um, Samurai the best chance to OC. That is 100% what you're doing here. They could uh, opt up not to ban G so that Dual Kevin can play G um, as a secondary, but then the Karen ban is like a eh. Like, obviously, Rob is a very strong player, but um, when you're trying to give someone the best chance to win, the, ideally, you remove the chaos that is possible. And chaos in the form of G is a very strong possibility. So you could just say... Good luck, Kevin. <laughs> Throw him to the wolves um, of whatever tertiary character he has. Uh, I think, did we see Bison at some point or something? That was someone else. I'm pretty sure. I think, Broly played yeah. Bison once. Sorry? Broly Legs played Bison once. Broly played Bison. Someone else played Bison too. It might have been Rob. No, Rob played Akuma once, which was interesting. Oh, Akuma too. Um. Anyways, so... I find this matchup to be fairly even because it's going to be a it's obviously Samurai OCV versus Do or um, versus whoever doesn't get banned and Shine. So I'm go now going to open up the panel to my wonderful co-host, <laughs> and um, I'd love to hear what your guys' thoughts on who you feel might win, starting with Spliced Helix for Galen. I mean, I don't see why Gale wouldn't win. You know, you're making this sound a lot less difficult than it's supposed to be. I, I, I'm sorry. I, it's, I mean, there's, there's obviously going to be the power of samurai. You, you've got, you've got to take that into account, regardless. You have to just because of how the guy plays. He's, a, he's a proven commodity. So, yes, I think that's the thing. But then you turn it around the other way, and, you know, two out of three. Of Team Gale is a proven commodity, and Shine is not banned, even though he's even though he's hovering around fifty percent for for not being banned with with a Buki. You know, it's it's still a thing. So I would have to give it to Gale just because of the strength of the other two. Um, Knuckle do you you ban G? He's got he's got Guile. He's got Mika. He's got Cami. You know, at, that's not really, that's not really a, any kind of guarantee. You know, you ban you ban G, and he's like, okay, I'll play somebody else. Mm -hmm. You ban Karen, Rob's got Guile. A little bit of bias there, but you know, he's a Guile player. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and Shine has a Buki. Shine oh, has a Buki. So yeah, Rob Nicali. Yeah, that too. So I mean, yeah, I'm, I'll give it straight to Gale, straight to. Gale. 
Okay. Yeah, let's, All right. I, I, I'm, there are a couple of factors that we have to take into account here. One, Gale has nothing to play for. They have locked up the number one seed. They can literally do anything they want. Number two, Dual Kevin will not have Rashid, obviously. The last time they played Frost 1, Dual Kevin won two games with Rashid. Rashid is that good. Not not a non-factor now, for sure. So, that being said, one, my uh, my my hopes and dreams for my friend Sherry. I'm sorry it's not going to happen this time. She's not going to win a game this time around. But... You gotta believe! But... Because... Be because yeah. Gale has nothing to play for, I think they're going to mess around just enough for Samurai Zakuma to be a factor. I'm picking Frost. They're going to pick Ryu, Ken, and Sagat. I'm, I, <laughs> I'm picking Frost because I Gale has literally nothing to play for um, other than showing us why Ibuki needs to be bad. <laughs> like, I, and if, if Shai just goes off the board if they all go off the board that would be even funnier um it's terrible sportsmanship but they don't have to be sports they've already earned their spots as the number one team so kudos to you you have won the season the regular season get ready for the playoffs don't show all your cards play the backups okay um to make sure so that means helix is gale toga has frost Mortzi has um see this is a hard one man personally i this is one I mean this is why i'm opening up to you guys because i uh i have a tough time committing to either of these teams. um but given history within the street fighter league given access to bands to weaken gale i'm also going to go with frost uh due to the fact that samurai is a monster and i think he is one of the few people who, because one of those wins, Dual Kevin did get two wins. One of those was Samurai. And I'm fairly certain it was him beating. He beat no. Knuckle Deuce G with Ryu. So. Ryu. So. I won't be uh, upset if Gail just comes out with a freaking Cody, a Kage, and a Han. Are you kidding? <laughs> Knuckle Deuce picked Nash, and it'll be the greatest thing ever. <laughs> so, OCV with you know, at least you guys have like small hopes that your characters could come out when the shit are we gonna see fang right hey I, I, I hey hey hey, hey, a lot of hey, fang. hey joey has a fang he said so himself <laughs> sorry i had to bring it up because he said it he said it he did say anyways it. uh so yeah that's uh that's pretty much all i got so just to recap we have um we have spirit winning over uh inferno we have Storm crushing Psycho, and Helix has Gale beating Frost, and then Toga and myself have Frost overcoming Gale and putting themselves, uh, keeping the tie alive. So if every, this is what's actually really interesting, is that the stands could look literally the exact same next week. Probably. I wouldn't be surprised. I believe I said Inferno was going to win. He did, I, I he did say Inferno was going to win, actually. Yeah, but that, I'm not putting yours down. <laughs> we, you know we, what? I, I'll put it down for the sake of it. Well, he did. Uh, he did say Broly was going Helix to get his win. Is yes, wrong. But Inferno uh, might. Win. Okay. There you go. That's the uh, I gave. <laughs> uh, and I'm I'm still of the belief because neither team is playing for anything with regards to Storm versus Psycho that uh, I want automatic to hover random select and just say go. Just so, do it. Just do That'd it. That'd be kind of cool. I think it'd be, it depends if every team, like there's a possibility, like I said, that every team wins. Mm -hmm. That is a distinct possibility that all three of these tied teams win and nothing changes. There's also a possibility that they all lose. And nothing changes. Uh, I think that's a lot <laughs> less possible because <laughs> yeah. Inferno's playing Psycho. Yeah. Or, sorry, Inferno, um, sorry, Storm's playing, playing Psycho. Yeah. In which case, the stands would still be the same yeah. because... Storm still. Yeah. So as it's actually very likely we might see the same stand this week. Um that is actually that is my full The the game. only the only thing that would that would change that it would be Storm losing and one of the other teams winning, correct. Okay. Which I think is very difficult. But we could also see um this is more I feel like this is more of a fight between um 
Frost and Inferno are it's pretty much a fight but for Frost. This is Frost is the only team that can really shake things up. Every other team, it doesn't matter. Um Storm is um solidly in second unless they lose and both of the teams win. If they so no matter what, they're playing the third place or the second place, or they're playing the third place person. Mm-hmm. Or like the person they're never playing Gale is what I'm trying to yeah, they, Unless they, successfully both, they lose them. and both teams win. Yeah. Whereas the other two teams are fighting to um, make the other fourth. Yeah. Basically. They, they're, so they're, this is a fight pl- and the people who have the power to do that are Frost. Mm-hmm. They, are, they, they need are... to be the ones to win. They cannot either both lose or both win because that keeps them uh, like, and Frost has to win basically. Otherwise they're fourth. Yeah, they want uh, teams right now in the, in that log jab. They are playing to avoid Team Gale, so and they have the hardest one too. Yeah, which makes it tough. So it's actually kind of exciting because that is going to be the match. That is the that is the match. Let's hope uh, it doesn't show up first on the uh, on the docket tomorrow. Yeah, that'd be kind of lame. All right, so that that does it for stats with Mortsy. Video footage from Street Fighter League Pro US is used with permission from Capcom. Follow the Capcom Pro Tour and Street Fighter League on Twitch at twitch.tv slash Capcom Fighters, on YouTube at youtube.com slash Capcom Fighters TV, and on Facebook Live at facebook.com slash Capcom Fighters. The aforementioned final week of the regular season airs tomorrow, 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Pacific on Twitch and YouTube. Tune in to find out how the rest of the top four plays out, and congratulations to Team Gale on clinching the first seed in Street Fighter League Pro US Season 2 playoffs. And congratulations to Morsi for his 20 yeah, CPT 20 points. 20 CPT 17th, point. baby! All right, for the panel, Splice Helix, the aforementioned CPT 20-point winner, Morsi, and myself, Tagashi Asriel, thank you for watching. We will see you guys next week on Beyond the Fist. Take care, everybody.